Motherhood plays an important role in the Bible. It binds the beginning and the end. These stories offer us a glimpse into the heart of God. And so we start at the beginning. Taken from the side of Adam, gifted with bringing forth life, the first woman was named Eve because she was the mother of all living. But she was also a mother in her own right, the first of many mothers to come. Though Sarah's womb was closed, God promised nations and kings would come from her. Ten years pass, and motherhood seems as impossible as the day it was promised. But the Lord is faithful to keep his promises, and Sarah bore a son who made her laugh. Leah was the firstborn, overlooked by her husband Jacob, who gave his heart to her younger sister. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Despite Jacob's disdain, she found her motherhood in the Lord. When Pharaoh became angry at the fruitfulness of the Hebrews, Jochebed sacrificed her motherhood for the sake of her son. When Pharaoh's daughter saw the child, she had compassion on him. Because of Jochebed's sacrificial motherhood, the Israelites found freedom. Naomi was a mother who experienced the loss of her sons, yet she gained a daughter in Ruth who declared, For where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. Naomi and Ruth became family by faith. Mary, a virgin and not yet married, was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. The motherhood of this blessed woman was more than the continuation of a family name, but a means for God to bring a savior into the world to save his people from their sins. From the garden to the cross, there have always been mothers. These women paved the way for all women, representing the full spectrum of the ways one could be called mom. Whether a mother in faith, mentorship, adoption, or by birth, you play an important role in the stories of generations to come. To all the Sarahs, Leahs, Jochebeds, and Naomis, Happy Mother's Day. Well, we do want to celebrate Mother's Day today. So uh, raise your hand if your mom's in here. Raise your hand high. Moms, not Micah. Yeah. No, if you're a mom, if you're a mom, raise your hand. All right, very good. We want to celebrate you guys today. Thank you so much um, for all you do. Um, sacrificial love um, and, and um, the hard work that you guys do. We, we don't overlook that, and uh, we're thankful for it. And so the message this morning is still going to be an axe, but it's amazing how it actually translates to moms and, and all of us. And so we're going to have a, a great time looking in the book of Acts today. Um, let's pray. Um, Lord God, as we come before you this morning as one, one big family, Lord, um, giving you the praise, Lord, um, uh, that you deserve and um, um, thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us the opportunity to be here one more time and uh, here to worship your name and, and um, lift your name high. Uh, Lord, I ask that um, whatever um, um, we learn today, Lord, um, let's not just keep it to ourselves, but um, share it to the world, Lord, and share it to others that who, who, who really need your, your, your scripture, Lord. And uh, Lord, thank you once again for... Uh, for sending your son to die for us on, this, uh, on the cross. And uh, we know that we don't deserve it, Lord, and, um, but you're mighty, you're the mighty God, and you have mercy on us, and uh, you continue to love us more than anything, Lord. Uh, in your holy son's name we pray, amen. All right, we'll start off with this song, um, How Great Thou Art.
may be seated. So we've been uh, going through the commands of Jesus, and today we get to that part where he tells us how we should pray. So this is the, the famous Lord's Prayer that we read about in Scripture. Probably you guys have learned it as young children, even in school they teach you how to pray the Lord's Prayer. But let's read the Scripture around that. It says, when you pray, do not be like those who only pretend to be holy. They love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners. They want to be seen by others. So you can just imagine this picture. The Pharisees, they're all standing out on the corners, praying, oh God, you know, come do this and come do that. And he said, whoa, 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 whoa. He's like, I, I, want, I want, to, want you to pray a different way. He's like, he's, he's like, not out proclaiming it like this, not like they do. Watch this. What I'm about to tell you is true. They've received their complete reward. When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who can't be seen. He will reward you. Your father sees what is done in secret. Now think about this. Now it's just you and God. And when you get in a room by yourself, wow, just you and him, it's a lot different than praying up in front of somebody, praying out there, praying over there. It's just you and God. And that might feel awkward. That might feel awkward sometimes because you're like, is God really here? Yeah, he's everywhere. It's just you and him. And so that is a, a safe space, a, a place where you and him can just talk and have conversation. And that's what he's wanting. He's wanting that, that friendship, that intimacy with you. And so that's how he's saying, when you pray, watch this, don't keep talking on and on the way ungodly people do. They think they will be heard because they talk a lot. It's, it's not about how much you say, it's what you say. And so he's just saying, you don't have to talk and keep babbling on and on and on. Don't be like them. Your father knows what you need even before you ask him. This is how you should pray. All right, here it comes. You guys know this, right? Our father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins just as we also have forgiven those who sin against us. Did you hear that part? Have you ever thought, uh, you know, somebody hurt you and you need to give them forgiveness and you can say, oh, I've already forgiven you for that? Huh. Guess what? I believe God is the only one that can forgive and truly forget. Sometimes we want to take that hurt back up and hold on to it. And that's why he says, every time you pray, you need to pray for strength to forgive people. Because you can't do it on your own strength. You've got to let those hurts go and allow the Lord, because he forgave us, right? He says, just, forgive us our sins just as we also have forgiven those who sin against us. Keep us from falling into sin when we're tempted. Save us from the evil one. Matthew 6, 5 through 13. Isn't that cool that we have a God that shows us how we can talk to him? This is how we talk to him. Do you talk to different people differently because of who they are? Maybe. Maybe. If you went to maybe a prime minister of the country or, or some president of another country, you would probably talk to them a little bit differently than you talk to your best friend. Hey, man, what's up, right? You talk to them a little bit differently, right? But God is showing us how we can talk to him. Simple, not these long, babbling prayers. Just talk to him like he's there in the room, just you and him. That's what he wants. He just wants you to be real with him. There's so much in this command of Jesus. This is how he wants us to pray. So now that we've learned this, now we teach others how they can pray. 
And we're going to learn about a little bit more about that today in the book of Acts. How we need to be prayer warriors. Like think about you're going into battle with your prayers. And we can be a warrior. So what an awesome, awesome thought. Let's stand and continue in worship.
packed cities all ruled by the Roman Empire. Each city was a diverse blend of cultures, ethnicities, and religions. And because of this, there were all sorts of temples for offering sacrifices to all sorts of gods, and each person had their own portfolio of gods that they gave their allegiance to. But in every city, you'd also find a minority group who wouldn't worship any gods but their own, the Israelites, also known as the Jews. They claimed that their god was the one true creator and king of the world. 
Now, all these cities were connected by a network of roads built by the Roman Empire, and so it was easy to move around, to do business, and even spread new ideas. Now, one person familiar with these roads was the Apostle Paul. He spent the second half of his life traveling from city to city, announcing that Israel's God had appointed a new king over the nations. This king wasn't like anyone who'd come before. Right. Most kings rule with aggression or power, but this new king rules with self-sacrifice and love. His name is Jesus, and Paul is his herald, who's inviting all people to live under this king's rule. The stories of Paul's travels and how people receive this message, that's what the third part of Acts is all about. For some time, Paul's home base had been in the city of Antioch. And from there, he and his co-workers went out on three road trips, traveling by land and by sea to strategic cities throughout the empire. In each city, Paul's custom was to go first to the Jewish synagogue where his people gathered. He'd start teaching and showing how the Messianic king promised in the Hebrew scriptures is Jesus of Nazareth. And some believed this news, others didn't, and still others thought this message was so misleading and dangerous they would incite riots to kick Paul out of town. All right, so we are in Acts chapter 13, and so I um, encourage you, if you don't have a Bible, um, what I'll be using up on the screens, the, the um, Adventure Bibles are over here. You can grab one of those for sure. Otherwise, the, the words will be up on the screen for you. But um, So mothers, mothers are amazing. I had an awesome mother. Um, she's still li- living today. Um, and so, hi, Mom. Uh, so anyway, um, but she is um, just been a fantastic mother. Um, I, I just she she taught me what was most important in life, and that is Jesus. Okay, right? Jesus, our family, uh, the church, um, and friendship. And um, and so she was. I would always see my mom in her Bible, reading God's Word, and uh, left such a legacy. Uh, and every time the church was open, our family was there. Um, and so um, I just I love my mom. You know, moms have this special way about doing things, right? Different than dads. All right. Dads are, are kind of like, all right, I'm going to prepare you, son, for the real world. Right. You know, moms, though, moms have this soft and nurturing way about them. God's wired them differently than the dads. Okay. Um, and, and so uh, we celebrate that. They, they offer more affection. They express uh, their feelings and they express in words. Um, you know, dads might be like, all right, just do this. Follow my example, right? Dads might not be as, as word driven, but moms, they, they, they want to talk issues out um, with, with their kids and, and they've just they're softer more nurturing less demanding um, but but dads we'll get to you guys in in June all right we'll talk to you guys in June when it comes around to Father's Day all right but today is mom's day um, and it's so neat unique how we're in Acts chapter 13 and a lot of this can apply for moms as well as all of us but I just thought how unique this was as we're going so the central idea today is God uses us to spread the gospel, all right? He wants to use us to spread his word, all right? And we know this, we've seen this in Acts as the early church was forming. Even persecution started happening, but that was all part of God's design. When persecution started, they scattered. Well, when they scattered, more people could hear about the good news of Jesus. And so here we are in Acts chapter 13, Uh, One through three. Let's start with this. In the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Among them were Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius from Cyrene. Simeon was also called Niger. Another was Manian. He had been brought up with Herod, the ruler of Galilee. Saul was among them too. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit spoke, set apart Barnabas and Saul for me, he said. I've appointed them to do a special work. The prophets and teachers fasted and prayed. They placed their hands on Barnabas and Saul and then sent them off. 
All right, so we're going to start to see in this next part of Acts, Paul, Barnabas, Paul, and Silas, a lot of them, they start doing a missionary journey. Matter of fact, Paul took three of them, three missionary journeys, and he started going miles and miles and miles telling others about Jesus. This was where it all started. They were all gathered together in Antioch. Can you put the uh, map up there? Last week, we took a look at this map. It all started in Antioch, which is like way up here. All right, now Jerusalem, this is where Jesus did a lot of his ministry. He was crucified, came back to life. He ascended up into heaven and everything. When the persecution started, like Stephen and all that, it's scattered from here. So it's going out and then it all it reaches all the way up here to Antioch. And we talked about, we introduced that last week. Antioch was a, a central hub. People were gathered together and they were Christians. They fir were first called Christians in Antioch. So here they all are gathered together, fasting, praying, and it says there's teachers and prophets, and they get a special message from God. The Holy Spirit still is speaking to them, and he says, set aside, set apart Barnabas and Saul for me. I've appointed them to do a special work. So they get a word from the Lord here, and this is where the missionary journey began. Now I want you to see something. Did you hear the people that were all gathered together here, this pro these prophets and teachers? They were so diverse. They were all so different. Listen to this. Some of them were Barnabas. Okay, he was from Jerusalem down there. And then Cyprus. Simeon, Lucius. Simeon was also called Niger. Then do you know what Niger means? Black. All right, so Simeon was called black. So he looked different than even the rest of the guys. Another was Manian. He had been brought up with Herod, the ruler of God. Now, we just talked about Herod last week, right? Herod, he was messed up. I mean, this guy was a tyrant. He wanted to kill people. And Herod was, was meat. Now, this guy, Manian, was brought up with Herod. So even this guy was different. I mean, they could have looked at him and be like, yeah, but you, you were friends with Herod. But guess what? They didn't look at all their differences and see it as a problem. They were all united with the Holy Spirit. They didn't let anything divide them, even though they had a lot of opportunity to do that. I'd like to see us in here as this church is beginning. This is, this is us. We're all different, but we can celebrate those differences. And we can all be united in the Holy Spirit. So we got to celebrate differences. There's all sorts of different moms in here. Let, let's, let's just see how different we are. Who has been the mother the longest in this room today? All right, how, how many of you have been a mother for over 20 years? Okay. How about over 25 years? 25 years. Over 25 years. 28 years? Okay, I think. Okay, so she has been the mom here. The long, now, who's been the shortest, the, the t length of time, the shortest? Who's been a mom for, let's say, 10 years or less? 10 years or less. 10 years or less. Okay, so I think, yeah, Candace. All right, so Candace. So she has been the mom the shortest amount. Huh? Wait, what? Oh, oh, back here? Okay, maybe back here, yeah? yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. So, so we have the shortest, so we have, uh, all right, let's do this. How many kids do you have? All right, who has the most kids? All right, so who has seven kids or more? Seven children, anybody have seven? Six? Joshua. <laughs> five? Who has five children? Who has five children? Anybody have five children in here? Yeah, yeah, five children. Okay, yeah. All right. Who has only one child? Who has only one child? All right, yeah. See, so, so, we have, so we have lots of kids, a little bit of kids. We've got mothers for a long amount of years, short amount of years. Yeah, so we're all different. We're all different. And we can celebrate. That's what we need to do is celebrate diversity. God made us all different and for a specific reason and a specific plan. So we need to, number one, 
celebrate diversity. So many times this world wants to take us and say, you're different than me. I'm over here with my people. That's what they were doing back then, Jews and Gentiles. That's a natural thing that, that people want to do. But guess what? Jesus wanted to break all that down and say, celebrate diversity. He brought this group of men together that was like all over the place. And yet he brought them together through the Holy Spirit. And he spoke to them. Look at what he said. He said, I've appointed Saul and Barnabas to do a special work. Guess what? Moms, you have been appointed for a, a special work. You've been called. You have been called. Number one, you've been called to be a mom. How amazing does that make you feel as a mom that God would trust you with his children? Wow. Now think about that. God trusts you, mom, to be mom for that, that child. That's a special calling. You are called. You are set apart to be a mom. And guess what? You've been called to a special work. Just like Paul and Barnabas were called to go and do a special work, to go and share the good news. You all, as moms, have been called to a special work. I saw this, eight qualities of moms. All right, let's put that list up here. Love this, patient, respectful, empathetic. You know what empathetic means? It means like they'll, they'll get down and they'll be sad with you. They'll be happy with you. They will, they will be there with you. How about humble, strong? Authoritative? Yes. God's called them to be authoritative. That's right. Supportive? Support. And then loving. Moms, you have been called to this special work for your kids. Now, do we always feel that way? <laughs> Not always feel that way. But that is the work that God calls moms to. God has trusted you that you will break the mold of how you were parented and that you will parent his way and raise up your children in the way they should go. See, we can all think of our parents and how they did things maybe the right way or the wrong way. And God's telling you to take what they've done and build on the good things and take out the bad things and start a new mold, a new tradition, a new way. For me, my dad, he grew up without a dad. And yet he learned how to be a dad because he became a Christian. He became a Christ follower. So he had a father, not an earthly dad. They got divorced. So he didn't live with my grandfather, his dad. And you know what he did? He didn't say, oh, poor me. I don't know how to be a dad. Nobody taught me how to be a dad, so I'm not going to be a good dad. No, 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 no. He didn't do that. He said, I'm going to be a dad because God shows me how to be a dad. And I'm going to reject the bad things from my earthly dad. And I'm going to build on the good things. And I'm going to be a dad that God wants me to be. And so are you going to be that one that changes and becomes more what God wants us to do as a mom or a dad. Let's go on. So what happens to Paul and Barnabas, uh, or Saul and, and Barnabas? They, they, they start this missionary journey. So let's look at what they first encounter. Now, you've just been set out. So here I am with, with Barnabas. I'm Saul and, and Barnabas, and we're, we're going to start traveling. And we're going to come to a town. They're not going to know us. We're not going to know them. So I'm hoping it's going to be a good experience. Look what they face, the very first thing. In chapter 13, verse 4 through 12, Barnabas and Saul were sent on their way by the Holy Spirit. They went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. They arrived at Salamis. There they preached God's word in the Jewish synagogues. And John Mark was there with them as a helper. They traveled all across the island until they came to Paphos. Now, Remember where you were in the scripture right here? Go back to the map. All right? And you're going to come back to the scripture. 
Let's go back to the map. Where did they go? What's it say? It says, they went from Antioch and they sailed down to Salamis. This is Cyprus, this little island right here. And they, they come into Salamis and they wind up traveling this whole island of Cyprus to Paphos. So they wind up in Paphos. Now watch what happens in Paphos. All right, go back to that scripture, Braden. You up there on verse 6. They traveled all across the island, right? Here they come to, to Paphos. There they met a Jew named Bar Jesus. That's kind of an interesting name, right? They recognize that second name, Jesus, right? But, but guess what? He was an evil magician and a false prophet. He was an attendant of Sergius Paulus, the governor. Paulus was a man of understanding. So this government, or this governor guy, he's a good guy. He sent for Barnabas and Saul. He wanted to hear God's word, but the evil magician, now his name changes to Elymas. All right, they call him Elymas now. He opposed them. The name Elymas means magician. Guess what? He tried to keep the governor from becoming a believer. Saul was also known as Paul. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Look what he does. He looked straight at Elymas. And he said to him, you are a child of the devil. You are an enemy of everything that is right. You cheat people. You use all kinds of tricks. Won't you ever stop twisting the right ways of the Lord? Now the Lord's hand is against you. You're going to go blind. For a while, you won't even be able to see the light of the sun. Right away, mist and darkness came over him. He tried to feel his way around, but he wanted to find someone that would lead him by the hand. When the governor saw what had happened, he believed. He was amazed at what Paul was teaching about the Lord. What? Man, right out the gate, they meet this evil magician, false prophet, anti-Jesus. And Paul looks at him straight in the eye and says some pretty truthful stuff. Moms, you are going to find yourself in some weird places. I mean, like, not just physically weird places, but like, what is happening? What is going on? Right? So, some islands, like you might feel all alone, some different places, different circumstances with your kids. And you might be going like, Lord, what is happening? I'm in this weird and strange place. <laughs> and have you ever felt yourself, <laughs> have you ever felt yourself looking at your kid going, you are a child of the devil. You're an enemy of everything that's right. You're cheating. You're doing this. You're doing all kinds of tricks. Aren't you going to stop twisting the truth? You ever, you ever felt like that, saying that to your kids? I hope not. I hope not. But that is the enemy. The enemy is not people. The enemy is the principalities of darkness. And guess what? He's going to use people. Here's, here's the enemy's strategy. If, if you can figure out the enemy's strategy, you'll know how to attack back. Well, here's what, number one, the enemy will seek you out face to face. This man, this evil magician came straight up into Paul's face and started, he didn't want his governor to become a believer in Jesus. That is straight up the enemy's work. And so the enemy will seek you out face to face and get in your way. The enemy, number two, will meet you in your house or outside your house. Anybody feel sometimes the enemy is just attacking inside your house? Yeah, he's going to attack inside your house. He's going to attack outside your house. Guess what? The number three, the enemy, he's not going to stop attacking. He won't stop. He's relentless. He wants to destroy. He seeks. He, he kills. He destroys. That's, his, that's all he wants to do. Number four, the enemy will use people to attack you and your children. He, he used this evil magician. That evil magician wasn't the enemy. It was the enemy inside this man. He didn't want this man, the, the, the governor, to become a believer in Jesus. So he was going to use this man to stop it all. 
So here is the point. The enemy's going to be relentless and try and attack you. And moms, seriously, attack you in the house, outside the house. He's going he's gonna to try and mess with your kids. But it's the enemy. Your kids aren't the enemy. Dad's not the enemy. So how do you attack back? How do you attack back? Watch this. How about this? Fill your kids with truth. Fill your kids with the truth. Use scripture. Proverbs 18, 21. It talks about using words as giving life. Speaking life into people. You ever felt like somebody was attacking you with their words? Man, your words, they can kill. They can kill your spirit. Man, they can hurt. But use words to fill them up with truth. So, number one, fill your kids with truth. Number two, call out the evil. Call out the evil. Sometimes you got to name the enemies and say, Jesus, fill us up. Get these enemies out of here. And you call out the evil in your house, outside your house, wherever those attacks are happening. I'm telling you guys, this is real. Paul and Barnabas faced it. Faced it face to face, this evil magician. And we will, we will face attacks of the enemy. And so how do we attack back? We, we fill the kids, fill ourselves with truth. Call out the evil things in your life. If you reveal the enemy's motives, he's going to be like, man, she knows what's happening. He knows what's happening. And then when you say, Jesus, make them flee, Jesus wins. Jesus wins. Those enemies have to flee. Lastly, be a prayer warrior. Be a prayer warrior. Ask God for protection. Some people in your life are going to want to harm you and your kids. The enemy is doing that. Not the people. The enemy is doing it. So you've got to ask for prayer. Do you guys realize, how about this? Let's realize the impact of prayer. If God is eternal, which he is, and he hears our prayers, doesn't that make our prayers eternal? Wow. Now we're, now we're like, whoa, praying's important because they impact eternity. They impact everything. God hears our prayers. And so when we're a prayer warrior, we're jumping from the physical, visible realm of things, and we're, we're entering into, with our prayers, the spiritual and invisible world, where the enemy is fighting against angels and the principalities of, uh, of goodness versus darkness. That's what's happening. When you're praying, you start speaking into that realm. And that's why it's important. We've got to attack back with the scripture and with prayer. Now, on that, that was last week, right? Do you guys remember that? Last week, P, all right? P is praise, praise God. R, repent. A, ask. And Y, yield, yield to him. And that's a simple formula for praying. Also the Lord's Prayer, we just read that a little while ago. But be a prayer warrior. I'm telling you what, my mom, I'm so thankful for her prayer life. Because I know they worked in my life. She was praying for me and praying for me and praying for me. She was doing the things she knew she couldn't do and asking God to do those things she couldn't do. And so if you're a mom, praying for your kids, praying for them, watch what God will do. Maybe you've been trying to fix their behavior. God's going to fix their insides so their behavior changes. Pray. Pray. All right, let's move on. All right, this is, all right, this is a long section of scripture, but I want you to see what happens in this, all right? This is verse 13 through 41. So read, read with me. From Paphos, they leave that whole situation with the evil magician. They, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga in Pamphylia. There, John Mark, this is pretty interesting. We'll come back to this later. John Mark left. John Mark was with them. The guy that wrote Mark, the Gospel of Mark, he went with them on their journey, but then he left them really quick. We don't know if he got homesick. We don't know what happened, but something made 
John Mark abandoned them. And, and so he's, he's out of the picture now. And then verse 14, from Perga, they went on to Pisidian Antioch. On the Sabbath day, they entered the synagogue and sat down. So this is a different Antioch than, than where they were started out. Verse 15, the law and the prophets were read aloud. Then the leaders of the synagogue sent word to Paul and his companions. They said, brothers, listen to this. Do you have any words of instruction for the people? If you do, please speak. <laughs> Paul's like, I got something to say. Paul stood up, motioned with his hand. Then he said, fellow Israelites and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. All right, so now he goes into the history lesson, goes into the gospel. All right, this is a pattern. Whenever, remember Peter, whenever he got a chance to speak the gospel, he would share it. And this is where it is. All right, so remember. Fellow Israelites, Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of Israel chose our people who lived long ago. He blessed them greatly while they were in Egypt. With his mighty power, he led them out of the country. He put up with their behavior for about 40 years in the desert, and he destroyed seven nations in Canaan. Then he gave that land to his people as their rightful share. All this took about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel, the prophet. Then the people asked for a king. So he gave them Saul, son of Kish. Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. He ruled for 40 years. God removed him and made David their king. Here is God's witness about him. David, son of Jesse, is a man dear to my heart. He said, uh, this is what Paul said about David. And um, David said this, or God said this about David, that he was dear to his heart. David will do everything I want him to do. From this man's family line, God has brought to Israel the Savior, Jesus. This is what he had promised. Before Jesus came, John, this is in John the Baptist, preached that, he, that we should turn away from our sins and be baptized. He preached this to all Israel. John was coming to the end of his work. Who do you suppose I am, he said. I'm not the one you're looking for. But there is someone coming after me. I am not good enough to untie his sandals. Listen, fellow children of Abraham. Listen, you Gentiles who worship God. This message of salvation has been sent to us. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus. By finding him guilty, they made the prophet's words come true. These are, ready, uh, these are read every Sabbath day. The people and their rulers had no reason at all for sentencing Jesus to death, but they asked Pilate to have him killed. They did everything that had been written about Jesus. Then they took him down from the cross. They laid him in a tomb, but God raised him from the dead. For many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. Now they are telling our people about Jesus. We are telling you the good news. What God promised our people long ago, he has done for us, their children, and he has raised up Jesus. This is what is written in the second Psalm. It says, you are my son, today I become your father. Then God raised Jesus from the dead. He will never rot in the grave. As God has said, holy and sure, blessings were to David, I'll give them to you. In another place, it also says, you will not let your holy one rot away. David carried out God's purpose while he lived. Then he died. He was buried with his people. His body rotted away. This is David they're talking about. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not rot away. My brothers, here is what I want you to know. I announce to you that your sins can be forgiven because of what Jesus has done. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. Moses' law could not make you right in God's eyes. Be careful. Don't let what the prophets spoke about happen to you. They said, look, you who make fun of truth, wander and die. I'm going to do something in your days that you would never believe. You wouldn't believe it even if someone told you. Wow. That was back to the, the beginning, the, the, the origin of Israel brought him out, King David, all that, all the way to Jesus. And now he tells them, you can be saved from your sin. So he tells them the gospel. And he tells them the story of everything that led up to that. 
So, here we are. Here we are. We need to be the teachers. This is a call to us to teach others about the history of God, history of Jesus, what he did. So, in our teaching, did you see what he, he the, the, the guy, the ruler of the synagogue, shouted out, brothers, do you have any words of instruction for the people? Well, here's the question. Do you have any words of instruction? Yes. If you have the gospel, you have a story to tell others. You can't just sit back and be like, mm, I got nothing to say. Didn't you know our central idea was God wants to use you to spread the gospel. And he gives uh, Paul the opportunity right here. So he has, he's like, yeah, I got something to say. And he raises his hand and he tells them the story of Jesus. Number two, you don't have to pass on the bad things that were passed to you. That's what we talked about earlier. There were some things maybe passed down to you that you don't need to pass on. You can cut it out and say, I'm going to be a difference maker. I'm going to be different. I'm not going to do what my mom or dad did to me because that wasn't what God wanted. I'm going to do it differently. You can do that. You don't have to pass on the bad things that were passed to you. Number three, no matter what your past sins, they can be forgiven. No matter how bad your past sin was, you can be a new creature in Christ. And so moms, take time to get a Bible. Read to your kids the story of Jesus. That's going to be teaching them. Just like Paul did with these people. They had never heard about Jesus. So here he is to tell them. Dads, take an opportunity. Sit down with your kids. Read Read a story from the Bible with them. You'll get to learn something. They'll get to learn something. I'm telling you, it's a win-win. Teach your children. Teach your grandchildren. Teach anybody you have an opportunity. The question is, do you have any words of instruction? Yes, you do. Yes, I do. We can all share and pass it on. That's the gospel. All right, let's finish up this last, uh, last part of Acts 13, and here we go. Paul and Barnabas, they started to leave the synagogue after he, he, he the, you know, shared the gospel. And the people invited them to say more about these things on the next Sabbath day. <laughs> so they wanted more. They were hungry. The people were told they could leave the service. But many Jews followed Paul and Barnabas. Many Gentiles who faithfully worshipped the God of the Jews did the same. Paul and Barnabas talked with them. They tried to get them to keep living in God's grace. On the next Sabbath day, almost the whole city, imagine this. You, you just spread the word of God to the people that were there that day. And they invite you to come back the next Sunday. And, and guess what? The whole, about, about the whole city is there to hear it. <laughs> is that not God? That's not God. Paul and Barnabas weren't out there handing out flyers. Say, hey, come hear us speak. Uh-uh. God drew about that whole city to come hear them again. That's all prayer. Do we want all of Hope Creek to hear about Jesus? Absolutely. Do we want all Pomona? Do we want all Silkgrass? Do we want all... Let's pray for it. Let's pray that God would do the things that we can't do so that people can hear his story. So, they all, about the whole city gathered. They gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they became very jealous. Uh-oh, problem here. The Jews began to disagree with what Paul was saying. They said evil things against him. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly. We had to speak God's word to you first, they said. But you don't accept it. You don't think you're good enough for eternal life. So now we're turning to the Gentiles. This is what the Lord has commanded us to do, he said. I have made you a light for the Gentiles. You will bring salvation 
to the whole earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad. They honored the word of the Lord. All who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole area. Okay, watch what happens though. Man, whenever God does something, the enemy wants to make another move. Look at verse 50. But the Jewish leaders stirred up the important women who worshiped God. They also stirred up the men who were leaders in the city. The Jewish leaders tried to get the women and men to attack Paul and Barnabas. They threw Paul and Barnabas out of that area. Paul and Barnabas, you know what they did? <laughs> See ya. And they moved on. They said, you want to act like this? Do it. But you heard it. Now you got to do something with it. You can reject it or accept it. But we're out. And they moved on. They shook the dust off their feet. There, this was a warning to the people who had opposed them. Then Paul and Barnabas went on to Iconium, and the believers were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Guess what, moms? You're going to feel attacked. You're going to feel attacked sometimes by the enemy. And it's going to be in different ways. You will feel attacked. That's a promise. Paul and Barnabas were doing the right thing, the right way, and they were attacked. So guess what? We shouldn't think it a surprise when we get attacked. Moms, you'll feel like no one's listening. <laughs> you ever been there? Why isn't anyone listening to me? Why isn't anybody hearing what I have to say? Moms, you're going to feel that way. You're going to feel like no one's listening. You're going to feel like you are not really making a difference. The enemy is going to feed you lies saying, uh, you don't matter. Nobody's listening to you anyway. That's what you're going to feel. But guess what? Thank God for his promises. His promises. God's word is truth. The enemy is going to feel, make you feel this way and this way and this way. But God, greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world. Amen? God is bigger. You don't have to keep feeding the lies from the enemies. You can stand strong on God's word. Because God's word said, moms, you've been called. You've been called to a special work. And it's a privilege to be able to do what you do. And so you go back to that calling. You go back to that calling, moms, and say, what I'm doing is making an impact. What I'm doing, I've been called out by God to do. And so, Lord, you just give me help. Don't let me listen to the enemy's lies. Let me hear your voice, Lord. And you keep going, moms, because you've got a special work to do. And it is making an impact. When you take time to raise up the gospel in these kids, guess what? It's another generation of people. And think about it. If you've got these kids and they each have the gospel and then they have kids and they're given the gospel and it, guess what? You got a tribe. You got a country <laughs> of people, a legacy, because you chose to stick with that special calling of being a mom. And, the, and God trusted you to parent these children. He thinks the world of you trusted you enough to bring up these kids. Yes, we're all going to make mistakes. Thank God for his goodness and his grace. And that's why he says we can be a new creation. The old is gone. Yesterday's gone. Guess what? His mercies are new. What? Every morning. Every morning we wake up with a brand new slate, ready to write the legacy on that, on that page. And so moms, I encourage you, keep doing what you're doing. Keep raising them up. Children, 
The Bible talks to you guys. Obey your moms and dads. Obey them. Respect them. Because think about this. The God of the universe. Hey, listen to this. The God knows you by name, right? If, if I brought God into this room, he would call each of your names. But guess what? He also knows every single star in this galaxy and calls them by name. And guess what? The God of the universe put your mom in your life to be your mom. So he knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. And so you kids, the Bible tells us God wants us to respect and obey our moms. Honor them. Because God, that's God's design. God's design to do that. All right? So, that's the message today. Why don't we pray? God, thank you so much, Lord, for your goodness and grace. Thank you for moms all over this world, Lord, who give so sacrificially. Lord Jesus, just like you gave your life to die for us. God, I pray that if there's somebody in here today that doesn't know you as Savior, Lord, that they would, they would start to understand that their sin is what's keeping them from you. Lord, help them to understand they need forgiveness. Lord, I pray, God, that you would start stirring in their hearts, draw them closer to you, Lord. Lord, save them. Lord, I pray that they would give up of themselves and say, God, you're worth it. You're worth me laying down my life to do whatever you want. God, thank you for your goodness. We can't pay for our sins, Lord. Thank you that Jesus paid for them on the cross. So I pray that whoever would not be saved in this room, Lord, I pray, God, that they would. They would cry out to you in the quietness of their room, a, a, a closet, some, some special place where it's just you and them, Lord, that they would cry out for salvation. Be honest and real with you, God. And God, I just thank you so much for all the moms in here. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just continue to stir in their hearts, encourage them. Lord, just keep raising them up to be the moms they need to be and that they are. God, thank you for uh, teaching us from your word. Lord, thank you for showing us that these missionaries, it, was, it wasn't easy. Going to new places, finding new people, getting attacked. Um, from people they didn't even know. Um, Lord, when we feel that, Lord, would you just help us to remember that there were people so long ago that felt that very same thing because they were spreading your word. Lord, give us opportunities this week, I pray, God, that you would bring people to our lives that we could share the gospel with. Lord, I pray that you would stir it in our hearts to, to give the word to our families. Lord, that each family would set aside time each and every day, Lord, to just read some scripture together. Understand the story of what you've authored and, and designed and said. Um, so God, just stir in our hearts, Lord, that we would do that. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.